Hey, what is up, mortals? It is Xavier PZ here with a new video for you. Welcome to part two of What If Azuku Had a Berserker Quirk? I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying, sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So we begin. With Shigaraki's words, Azuku had an idea. Using his quirk, Azuku retaliated every blow the Nomu struck him with his full unrestrained might. Azuku fights the Nomu head on with his quirk. Azuku starts fighting harder thinking about how the rest of his class will be counting on him to defeat the monster as he hears the screams of Mineta as he gets attacked. Azuku delivers a punch that stuns the Nomu again, hitting the monster harder and harder trying to defeat it. He fights with everything, as the Nomu is being matched by a 14-year-old kid. Nomu, stop playing and kill that child or die! Shigaraki tried to use his quirk on Azuku. However, Shigaraki couldn't grab onto him with all his fingers. In the ruined zone, Bakugo and Kirishima fight off the villains by ever exploding them or hitting them with Rock Fist before Bakugo blasts away to help rescue Izuku from the actually difficult villains. Bakugo jumped in using his explosions to distance Shigaraki from Izuku and himself. Bakugo tells Izuku that Momo is with Jiro and Denki and they are surrounded by villains. I'll hold off these weak shite villains. You save Ponytail and the rest while you can at the Mountain Zone. Bakugo blasts Shigi with his explosions at a faster and faster rate leaving no room for Shigi to move or use his quirk at all. Bakugo holds off the Nomu while fighting Shigaraki and keeping an eye out for Kurogiri. Nomu has strength, speed, shock absorption, and regeneration. It was specifically crafted to kill All Might, and nothing can bring it down, let alone some random little kids. Azuku runs to the mountain zone to save Momo Yayurozu and takes on every villain at the same time, knocking them out one by one. Defending the three heroes in training, he struck every villain that threatened the students, knocking them out with his might of a superhuman. In his head, he counts the time before his quirk ends forcefully. Azuku then looks at Momo and says, Yo, Yorozu, you said you can create anything you know the chemical composition of, right? Yes, however, I need to know the atomic layout. Well, I need you to make a drink that has sodium, calcium, potassium, leucine, isoleucine, and valine, methionine, H2O, alkanes, alkenes, Isoalkanes, cycloalkanes, aromatics, benzene, fructose, glucose, alphalinolenic acid, icosapentaenoic acid, docosahexaenoic acid, and blackberry in it as soon as you can make it. As Momo makes it knowing what it is, she asks, How do you know this complex chemical mix so well? Zuku then explains that this super juice recipe helps with his quirk. The electrolytes help me maintain water, and those are the first three essential acids. The next three essential acids help me build muscle, decrease muscle fatigue, and alleviate muscle soreness. And the last ones are fatty acids to help my body rebuild itself. After explaining the drink, he gets Momo, Denki, and Jiro to safety going to rescue other students from villains in the danger zone in the unforeseen simulation joint. After saving those students, Izuku would ask Momo to make more of that drink before leaving to relieve Bakugo of his stressful battle. Izuku jumps in to fight the Nomu as Bakugo fights Shigaraki, blasting him keeping his fingers away from him. Izuku strikes the Nomu, knocking it to the ground, battering the Nomu knowing it's gonna hurt like hell, telling himself he's gonna feel it later. The Nomu gets up, healing, swinging at Izuku. Izuku dodges the strike, and stood several meters away from the hand villain. With the Nomu standing behind him menacingly, he pushed off the ground at lightning speeds as he plunged his fist right into the Nomu's face. The creature's flesh rippled from the impact, and it slid several meters back. He then counters a punch with a strike to the throat. Knowing he's overusing his quirk, Azuku would use all of the info he knows, about to match the Nomu's might. Azuku continues attacking the Nomu, hoping for a miracle, as All Might bust in. I am here! The Nomu refocused its gaze onto the new foe that entered the battlefield. Villain, you think you can hurt my students and not be captured? The hand villain ordered. Nomu, go kill All Might! At the command, the Nomu rush past Midoriya to strike its target. All Might, in three jumps, takes out all of the minor villains in his way, then joins Izuku in his fight against the Nomu. Izuku and All Might fight together, overpowering the Nomu, as Shigaraki gets frustrated. Shigaraki dips with Kurogiri's help, as All Might finishes off the Nomu with a Detroit smash. The villain breathed raggedly until he looked up and met the hero's eyes. I'll, I'll kill you myself! Azuku drops in pain, losing his remaining time with his quirk. Bakugo defends Azuku and helps him as he tries to remember the recipe for Azuku's recovery juice. Momo walks over to Azuku and Bakugo, saying, 
Um, Bakugo, Midoriya asked me to make this drink for him before he went back to fight again. Huh, Ponytail? Guess Izu told you the recipe for his super juice. Give it here. He needed his super juice two minutes ago. Bakugo then helps Izuku drink the super juice as Izuku recovers faster. Gaining his strength back from the super juice, Izuku gets up slowly, still in pain, but is rapidly numbing and becoming less of an issue. After recovering completely, Izuku helps the rest of his class get medical attention. Most of the students end up uninjured, and the villains are captured one by one, with the exception of Shigaraki and Kurogiri, who escape together. The only injured parties included Bakugo's left and right arms, Aizawa's body, Thirteen's body and suit, Kaminari, Toru, Aoyama, and Uraraka. Those injured were taken to the hospital to be treated. While the injured students got the medical attention, Nezu called a teacher meeting to determine if 1A can be exempt from the sports festival or not and instead be graded based on how well they handle the villains. Before we get back to the video, I'd like to talk about our new channel, Celestia, our channel dedicated to all things Dungeons & Dragons. Currently, we have a series breaking down the different spells in D&D, and soon we'll be starting with some new series as well. So if you're a fan of D&D, or have an interest in learning about it, check it out. Additionally, if there is something you've always wanted to see get made into a video, head over there and leave a comment mentioning it. Nezu finishes the discussion asking Midnight, Aizawa, All Might, Present Mike, and Vlad King for their opinions. The four pros have a split opinion, with Aizawa and All Might saying that because the attack was unplanned, it's a better look at how proficient the students are with their quirk, and thus, they should only have to do the sports festival if they want to. But Midnight, Vlad King, and Present Mike said that they should get graded for their response to the villain attack, but they should also do the sports festival so they can see how well they do when they have time to train. Nezu decides to compromise. The best from the USJ attack can opt out while the pro hero will be shown what class 1A did to save and protect others at USJ. The top five who can opt out are Zuku, Bakugo, Momo, Kirishima, and Ida. Minutes after students enter the class, Aizawa enters clearly already tired and annoyed. The teacher looked as unamused and deadpanned as ever. So, the next words that came out of his mouth had the class shocked. The UA Sports Festival is in two weeks, so start preparing. Also, Midoriya, Bakugo, Yayurozu, Kirishima, Ida. For your hard work and efforts during the attack, Nezu wants to talk to you. As they walk to Nezu's office, they talk, and the rest of the class starts talking about why they think they have to go to Principal Nezu's office. As they enter, Nezu welcomes them, and offers them tea as he decides how he should extend his offer to the students. Well, as you know, we recently had a villain attack. Well, you were at the USJ, and me and the other staff think that you five, if you wish, are allowed to forego participating in the sports festival, as you have been marked on how well you can use your quirk based on the villain attack, and how or if you saved people. But you may still do so if you wish to. But your hero studies are not optional. Azuku, let's think this through. We beat real villains, saved our classmates, and escaped bad situations. If we did the sports festival right now, we'd be at a disadvantage. However, if we won like that, we'd show we're the best. That is true. I think it would be fun. And since we were able to defeat villains, and we were seen as two of the most adapted with our quirks, we would definitely win. Ah, uh, you're right. I'll take the sports festival. I will as well, obviously. I need to participate to show my talents, and growth to my family and heroes, and to show I have what it takes. I will be taking part in the festival to show what the Ingenium family has and is capable of. Kirishima agrees with the other students, as he wants to prove himself, thinking that participating in the sports festival is manly. Nezu explained that the students needed to do their best to show the public that the next generation of heroes were strong and resilient. So, you can use the training Jim Gamma when you need to train for the sports festival. So I'll write a note for your teacher so he doesn't stop you from training. The note reads that they can train in training Jim Gamma, at any time they want. Do not stop them, as if you can sleep during class, they can train during class. Any questions before you go back to class and prepare for the sports festival? Yeah, can Izuku and I have Recovery Girl be on standby while we spar and train our quirks? I can't condone acts that are clearly dangerous or otherwise against the public good, so I'll discuss that with Recovery Girl and get her opinion. It's not necessarily dangerous as long as we spar responsibly, we will only cause minor damage to each other, he said, lying his ass off. That may be true. However, putting a stick of lit dynamite in a room with others is not safe or smart. After the conversation, 
the five students begin returning to class, planning how they're going to train their quirks. When they enter class, they're instantly bombarded with questions as Momo goes and gives the note to Aizawa. Ida answers the questions as he is making a mental plan for the class's training so that they get the most out of it. We are called to Principal Nezu's office not because we were in trouble, but because he wanted to extend us an offer where we five could choose whether or not we wanted to participate in the sports festival, as well as allowing all of our class to train in the training gym Gamma. After school, the Class 1A students meet in the training gym Gamma for training and quirk strength training. Todoroki was training his ice, and only his ice by making lots of ice sculptures, mostly in the shape of his dad, so that he can give them to Bakugo for him to use as target practice. Bakugo is training his quirk by sitting in a barrel of steaming water and using his explosions to blow up the ice statues Todoroki was making as practice dummies. Momo and Sato train their quirks by eating as many baked goods as Sato could bake, either for the fat lipids or the sugar content. Momo also researched how things are made and their ingredients. Izuku trained by using his quirk to spar Hiroshima and Ashido. The two also used their quirks, as Bakugo was also randomly throwing explosions at him to help Izuku increase his reaction speed. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now there are a few more things I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, I'd like to thank our patrons, BD Flames, Ethan Davis, Terry Chills, Shifter Meals, Adam Zagel, Zill, Zavebeat03, and Joshua Phelps. Secondly, I'd also like to thank all of our YouTube members, Toy Acosta, Rob the King, Sith Lord 906, CF2364, and Knuckles, Rimu Tempest, Angel Juarez, Donald C. Stewart, Bryant Greer, and Demonized Fox. Thirdly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has you covered. Do We the Celestials, My Hero Academia, and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist? Check it out if you're interested. Fourthly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in today's excellent content production. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, I'd like to extend an invitation to join the team. The only caveat is that we only accept members from 16 years old to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interest by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for new members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching, and have a great day.